Salvete spectators, it's Masopust. Welcome back to Blood and Wine. We just defeated the Bruxa. Now it's time to do what we originally came here for, and that is to examine the body. Ah, uh, stinks. Waterlogged, both hands amputated. Body was quartered just as I thought. Laid in water for some time. Head swollen, and something took a few bites out of it. Hmm. Something in the throat. A pouch bulging with coins. Elf Guardian Florins from several different provinces. If the murderer did this, means we're dealing with a sentient thinking beast. Yep, as expected. Body was chopped up after death. Blows struck with great force, but bones sliced through, not crushed. Creature that killed him had long claws, sharp as a witcher's blade. First sank its claws into the victim's heart. No Bruxa did this. Third hand. The spare? Except it's clearly not the victim's. Guardsmen must have not noticed it as they picked everything up. How's this possible? Still warm. Blood still flowing? Several monster species can regenerate. Never heard of that happening to their severed limbs, though. Or of their limbs seeming completely alive after so much time. Examine the tissue more closely later. Might learn something. Ugh. Did you just put that in your pocket? So, murderer was clearly a monster, but not a Bruxa. But then why'd the Bruxa come here for the severed hand? And who does the hand belong to? Why the hell's it still warm? Now, pouch shoved down the victim's throat. What's the significance? And why was he chopped up into pieces? Lots of questions, no answers so far. Need to know about the other victims. I'll ask Palmerin to get me in to see the Duchess. So, let's recap for a moment here. Um, the Braxa was apparently the daughter of the innkeep? Or was it just another woman? Had, and the Braxa had nothing to do with the murder, apparently. They just came here for the hand. Did it lay down the hand or did it want to pick it up? The, the money in the throat may, may be a symbol for greed, punishment for greed, the killing maybe, and I'm not sold on a monster. To my mind it can also be a human that killed and chopped this guy off, chopped this guy's waist off. I don't think there's any more in this cellar. Let's check with our witch's senses. Nope. So time to get out. Oh. For a second I thought I was... ...cut off here. I, by the way, I do rock the standard Witcher movement. It is kinda... ...buggy or difficult to use in close quarters, but... ...it feels much more natural, as opposed to, for instance, the... ...Bloodborne or... Dark Souls series, but never mind. I, I just like it better and I uh, used it from the start. So when the alternative came out, I just didn't switch. <laughs> so funny that such a an idyllic place has such a nasty cellar. Kind of want to explore all that, but I know you guys want to search, uh, get on with the main quest. But I mean, just look at this. It's so beautiful in the Dilek. I wonder if it has changed that if Geralt jumps down a window uh, and height, he just dies because witchers cannot handle hates, heights. This is a nice vantage point, actually. We have Toussaint over there where we actually have to go at one point. Let's check, check out if there's anything more to this vineyard. Stairs leading up there. 
Let's check if we can get in there because there were a lot of dead soldiers, but are there any dead? Like, oh, that's interesting. Any dead civilians who, who ran this place before it got assaulted by the Brooks? So. Apparently not the Lord who owned it because it was sold. Ah, there's some lootable stuff. Infuse shard. Now, I haven't played it for a while, but I think I'm already picking up some new items. And my... Interesting. My preferred method of looting is just to grab everything and once our cap has been hit, which is 160 stones, I guess, kilograms, whatever, we can sort something out and leave it at home. In Our stash is in Novigrad in the new... what was it? Per Passiflora? No, the other one. One of the Andalions brothels slash night houses. So this is a civilian, I suppose. He was apparently the only guy working here. Okay, not unfeasible. What's this? Okay. Fishing net, that's definitely new. Okay, let's check our quest. Find Palmerin and ask him to take you to the Duchess. Ha! Huh. I missed already a quest. Use your Witcher senses to determine what kind of monster killed the guards. So... It could have been possible to determine it was a Bruxa or an, some kind of vampire beforehand. So to use the vampire oil, the vampire bomb and the black blood. But, well, I managed to do it after three deaths or something like that. I wonder where we have to go now. Oh, um, it's over here. It's not actually the capital yet. Let's just ride over there. And by the way, I play on the PC, if I haven't mentioned it already. And I, of course, use mouse and keyboard not Come on, Roach. Uh, I don't want to insult people but I really don't like game pads for that wait a second we have to go over here for that kind of play I even play Dark Souls on mouse and keyboard which not many people do just taking in the landscape Oh hey you! There was a murder of a few soldiers. Come on now. Don't care. All right. What estate is this? Ah uh, nope. We have to move right over here. Run, Roach. So it's in the shadow of the high castle of Eau Claire, where the Henrietta lives. We have to go there, apparently. Ooh. Is this the beginning of the tourney everybody's talking about? Hey there. That's interesting. Hello, there's some kind of a rock monster and we see some fighters in the back. Sword on sword action. I like that the guys with the big helmets on have muffled voices. Interesting. Okay, so we have to just follow the main path here. Yep, my eyes have slits. I need a fresh set of shoes for my mouth. Promptly, get your silver set. Prince Anzace. And a mere fifty crowns apiece. 
Oh, I can't talk to him, okay. But maybe to the blacksmith? No, what? Interesting, I thought they would sell some stuff. Of course, Nilfgaardian armor over here, because we are in Nilfgaard, albeit a very independent province. In accordance with Article 161 of the Ducal Code, the Attorney General for the city of Beauclair has designated a reward to be given to whomsoever shall bring before the court one Loth, son of Mark, alias Halfbreed. Actually, this a restaurant we already saw on the notice board at the inn. So I think we will encounter him at some point. I guess it's a halfling, a mixture of halfling and man or elf and man, I don't know. Looks like a halfling to me. Yeah, I have to interrupt your story. Sorry. Need to speak to the Duchess urgently. All right, you scamps. Story is done. Go find your parents. But the Pamarin. What about the story of Ritik and the dragon? The tales for another time. But take a good look at the man who stands before you now. This is Geralt of Rivia, the master witcher who lent his valiant hand to the defeat of the giant Goliath. Master Witcher. Is it true virtue always trumps villainy? Much as we might not like it, virtue's got nothing to do with it. Victory goes to the stronger. So, is there no point to being virtuous? Not what I said. Then what's needed to vanquish villains? A sharp sword and some skill. But what if there's lots of villains and they've sharp swords too? And lots of skill. That's where virtue starts to matter. Because they say the gods reward the virtuous after death. Now, that will do for questions. Go find your parents. <laughs> our enlightened highness has doubtless arrived at the tourney grounds to watch the battle in the arena. If we hurry, we'll be in time to speak with her before the spectacle begins. Lead the way. Lots of children around. Who's fighting? Elf guardian gladiators? Close, but not quite. As you will soon see. Someone's gonna fight a Shalemar? Put some bells on its tail to confuse it, slow it down? Whatever is the problem? The beast is a gift from the Emperor, no less. On its tail on enough. I saw the spectacle of the sword of Yorina in Nunez. There, a nice piece of the Shelmar with bells on its tail. Might have gotten lucky. Shelmar might have been lame. Who knows? Only a witcher has a real chance against a healthy Shelmar. And that's not even every witcher. Besides which, releasing a monster that dangerous in front of a crowd? Plain irresponsible. Well, we are kind of a party pooper. Who's going to fight the beast? Guillaume, a young man you met. Yeah. Mentioned he'd promised his heart's capture a monster trophy. Great Luff demands great sacrifices. Let's go. So this is definitely not a regular tourney. I dedicate my imminent victory to fair lady Vivian. It's begun. 
The fight shall have to end first. We must wait. Ah, Vivian's looking away, that's interesting. Uh oh. Damn it. We have to help him. Of course, the Witcher comes and saves the day, that is. <laughs> Wow, jumping about that in heavy armor. Gotta keep it down. What the hell are you talking about? Holy shit. Get out of here. Let's try out uh, a bomb. Did he do anything? Didn't see actually. Oh, come on. Yeah, it does some damage. But he's burning. Okay, no much sense in attacking his back. Yeah, he's burning, he's going down. The hell? Ooh, get out, get out. And actually, Baron Palmerin de Lanfthal is dead, or at least handicapped. Let's use a grape shot. Doesn't kill. <laughs> Bitch, please. Thank you very much. The Shelma lies defeated by Geralt of Rithia, master of the witchering trade. Behold, as the last gasps of life seep from the beast. Yay, we won. Be joyful. Master Geralt, do what you must. Finish the deed. Monster's no threat. No need to kill it. A victor may always show mercy. It is his right. Long live Garrett the Merciful! Pikeman, see to the beast! Forgive me. I am not as nimble as in my younger years. <clears throat> you fought bravely. Thanks for your help. Guillaume. The lot came damned close to dying. I'm 
Fine. Not hurt at all. Vivian? Smile as befits a hero and keep silent. Speech clearly paints you. She approaches. Geralt. We must talk. Vivian. You shall talk later in the medic's tent. Geralt, magnificent, breathtaking. Your grace. We knew that to summon you was a brilliant idea. We are delighted, raffish, to have struck upon it. And I'm truly... Uh, honored. See to our young hero. Hop, hop. For we must make off with Geralt. We should talk. We had been long awaiting your arrival. Had nearly lost hope. Then suddenly, that entrance, so spectacular. Your Grace. Shale Mars are dangerous creatures, even to knights in full plate armor. Nonsense. In Toussaint, knights have battled beasts for mere glory since time immemorial. True. Guillaume suffered a few bumps, scars, and bruises, but in return gained eternal glory as he who slew the monster. Mm hmm. What about the crowd? Say the Shale Mar had vaulted into the stands. Would have been a massacre. Geralt. Though we value your fortuitous intervention in the arena, we would remind you your services have been retained, and as shall soon become clear, you will be generously compensated for completing another task altogether. Well, it's all about the uh, games. Your Grace, my contract. I'd like to discuss it. Naturally, but not here. We shall need Damien. He let the investigation pending your arrival, but whatever could he be? Come, we must find him. All right. Tell us, have you come alone? Or did Viscount Julian accompany you? Wish to see Dandelion, Your Grace? Yes. I mean, no. Ugh. <sighs> yes. But solely to tell him we regret. Yes, deeply regret rescinding the death sentence we so justly handed down upon him. If we could turn back time, we would make certain he sat in a tower till he rotted. No, we would ensure he was broken on the wheel, then drawn, hanged, and quartered. Needless to say, Dandelion had. Ah. The very man we would entrust with these tasks. Damien de la Tour, captain of my personal guard. History with the Duchess. Your Grace, Witcher. Greetings. Sorry to have to tell you, but the guardsmen handling the last victim's body. I know already. The creature in the cellar of Corvo Bianco. Was it the beast? No, a Bruxa, a kind of vampire. Not the beast, but tied to it in some way. You know this how? Through a careful analysis of the evidence, both on the riverbank and at Corvo Bianco. Do you mean to insinuate the investigation thus far has been sloppy? Geralt insinuates nothing of the sort. We must listen to him attentively. Thank you. I examined the body of the beast's last victim. Might have found something. Need to analyze it. A quiet place, that's what I could use most right now. And maybe the help of an alchemist or a mage. Also like to hear all you know about the previous victims. Take it Sir De La Tour is my man for that. Firstly, call me Damien, please. Secondly, you should know I spoke against summoning you here. I've heard much about you. You bring trouble, or thus far have, always. And we've enough trouble as it is. Yet we are capable of defeating the beast on our own, without an outsider's help. I've no doubt about it. Damien, we settled the matter of the Witcher's employ some time past. Definitively. Since you have broached it nonetheless, let us discuss Geralt's pay. Are the legends true? Do Witchers usually demand that which you find at home, yet did not expect? 
Of course, talking about Siri here. Not quite, Your Grace. Law of surprise? It's something we invoke at times, but rarely. Usually we just take gold. Disappointing. This law sounds rather romantic. On the other hand, on returning to the palace, we would likely find impatient petitioners or a set of sample fabrics for a new dress. Poor rewards, both. I fear you'd not have much use for any of the surprises we are likely to come upon. Thus, we've decided you shall receive the deed to a vineyard, Corvo Bianco, and a sum of coin. You will doubtless consider this adequate. Title to the vineyard shall be given to you at once. Surely you'll need lodgings while you hunt. The coin, however, will be yours only once you have slain the beast. Lovely, generous gesture, Your Grace. But Corvo Bianco, isn't it the Duchy's temporary morgue? Is it now? The Chancellery has bungled things again, we fear. Not to be left unsupervised for one instant. Yet, in its mood, a morgue should present minimal problems to a witcher. What's more, nothing enhances a wine's reputation better than a grim legend. Thank you, Your Grace. I accept the contract, of course. But as I said before, I'll need some information. How did it start? Who was the first victim? Crispy was the first to die. He was famed once for his many glorious tournament victories. Then he grew old, hung up his sword, and took to winemaking. Crespi was not loved by the wine merchants. He was ruthless in business and thought to cheat many a time. He asked us for a dispensation from all court ceremonies. He did not grant it. He could not. Once you've taken the oath of a knight, you remain a knight till death. How'd he die? Where'd they find the body? Quite unusual, the circumstance. He was at a feast when suddenly one of his fellow feast goers noticed he was missing. The town watch found him an hour later. On his hands and knees, propped against the town pillory, his sword hanging from his neck. He had died of wounds inflicted with claws, not a weapon. Blows of great force. So he died suddenly, but the body was on its knees, meaning someone posed it. So it seems. Second murder. Tell me what you know. In the city there are certain nooks. No one reasonable ventures there after dark. Ramon Dulac's corpse was found in one such place. With the first murder, terror gripped the city. Its inhabitants grew wary, kept to safe areas. Consequently, news of the second victim came to us from a group of concerned cut purses. Criminals fear the beast? Telling in a way. Take it you've excluded the possibility that Ramon died at the hands of these bandits. Do you believe me, an amateur? Not hands, but claws killed Ramon Dulac. The wound was deep, clean. His body was found in a gutter, dressed in nightshirt and cap. A pillow placed under his head and his sword replaced by a bed warmer. Ramon de Lac, a knight who but a dozen years past was an advisor to our father, the Duke. Someone went to a lot of trouble to make him look ridiculous. Maybe revenge was the motive. It's not out of the question. Du Lac had shady dealings with the criminal underworld, but no one ever came forth with concrete proof of any misdoings. So... First two victims were knights, best years behind them. The same could be said of the third. Sir Delacroix was wont to claim that in modern times, knights face new challenges, enterprise being the latest addition to the chivalric virtues. He made a veritable fortune in the grain trade. Palmerin even nicknamed him Sir de la Stinchi. Found a coin pouch on his body, contained florins dating from various times, hailing from different provinces of the empire. Delacroix loved coin, true, but had no patience for numismatics. Lots of similarities between the victims. All the bodies were found in strange places under extraordinary circumstances. Seems the murderer, whoever or whatever it is, <coughs> has some meaning to convey. Sorry. These were honorable men. We are horrified by the disdain, the disrespect with which they were treated. These were knights of Toussaint. Blast it. Might be the point. 
From what you say, none was a model of virtue. Ever considered that's what the beast's trying to draw attention to? All the murdered men were knights who swore fealty to the five chivalric virtues. And even if the... Knights of Tusa swear fealty to what virtues exactly? Honor, wisdom, generosity, valor and compassion. Five virtues? Why are they so important to your knights? Strange question. Your Grace, forgive me. I'm a foreigner trying to understand another land's customs. You are forgiven. According to legend, the virtues we cultivate were bestowed upon us by the Lady of the Lake. How we truly came to espouse them, none remember. In Toussaint, we believe men of low birth should be simple-hearted and obedient. We expect much more, however, of our knights. They are to be soldiers and courtiers, lords and servants. Thus, the need for clear moral guidelines. At the time of his dubbing, a knight vows to demonstrate throughout his life honor, wisdom, generosity, valor, and compassion. Honor, wisdom, generosity, valor, and compassion. Interesting. Beast seems to be pointing up moral decay, denouncing it. Victims were all humiliated. Might have been murdered to emphasize their lack of specific chivalric virtues. Honor compromised by the pillory. Wisdom by ridicule. Generosity by a coin pouch shoved down a throat. It seems to fit, true, though not perfectly. Can't discount the theory if it's on the lips of everyone in town. Say our reasoning's right. Next murder will be just as showy and denounce the victim's lack of the fourth virtue, valor. We can also assume that victim will be an elder knight. Let's think. At the moment, all the knights are either at the tourney grounds, or in the palace gardens. Our annual hare hunt shall begin there shortly. Have you heard of the custom? Milton mentioned something. Seemed excited to prance around in a bunny costume. Not sure why. Hang on. Strange circumstances. A knight advanced in years. The famed cowardice of rabbits. Could it be that simple? Is Milton de Peyrac Peyren the next victim? Milton also knew Delacroix. Told me so down by the river. Damien! To me, something so obvious. De Peyrac Peyren, Crespi, Delacroix, and Delac formed the knightly team. It was years ago, but. They were a team? They were close friends, tightly knit, and as such, earned the trust of our father, the Duke. We often witnessed him turn to them with delicate matters. Later, their paths diverged. Unlikely to be a coincidence. Beast must know it too. It's a lead, I'm sure. Your Grace, we need to find Melton. Immediately. Rather problematic. You see, the garden entertainments are due to start, and he's disguised as the hare, hiding somewhere, waiting for some tipsy courtiers to find him. The hare's hiding place is a carefully guarded secret. We must call off the game, at once. First and foremost, we must remain calm. Damien, order the garden searched immediately, but discreetly. By no means can we disrupt the festivities. Panic will only incite the beast to strike sooner. And you, Witcher, follow me. My gardens, my knight, I shall take the fall. A murder is out of the question. I will not allow it, not near my palace. Horses, ready our horses. All right, it's on, and that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Your Grace! <gasps> oh God! <laughs> What's going on? I will see you soon. What the hell? Why I should? Your Highness, I mind it doesn't get wrinkled. <laughs> So, she's more that, than she seems. Hey! That is silk! Be careful! Give it to me! 